Hi, I'm Anastasia and I have something special for you. Have you ever wondered who came up with this brilliant idea to use acrylic to create nail extensions? Today we will meet this person and he will share the story of how it all happened. If you will search for a Wikipedia page about artificial nails, you will find his name in a history section, because he was the one who made the history of the nail industry. Mr. Fred Slack. So we're here with Fred Slack. Fred, how did you get into nail business? Well, I got into the nail business back in 1960 and 61 uh, when I bought Amco from my father, Dr. Fred Slack Jr., who really was the discoverer of nail extensions and acrylics. And uh, I got involved in 1960-61, bought the company, we were three people, uh, and the nail products that we developed back then, which were the original acrylics, were not suitable for use as nail products. They were too hard. They created uh, uh, difficult problems because the manufacturing processes were not good. And uh, we moved on from there. Can you tell a little, a little bit more about this story, how exactly acrylic was invented? Well, ac acrylic, acrylic, as we refer to it, the acrylic original polymers came from DuPont uh, and Roman Haas, and they were making plexiglass and lucite sheets. And, uh, and for many, many years in the dental business, they used all porcelain teeth, and a large uh, tooth company happened to be in Philadelphia, uh, and my father, Dr. Fred Slack Jr., worked for that company. He was a somewhat of a, a world-renowned dentist, and he helped in the process in developing teeth, and they used methyl methacrylate monomer and methyl methacrylate polymer to make those hard teeth. Uh, he thought back then we could use the same types of formulas for nail products, and as it turned out, we did not have the technology to really make suitable acrylic powder liquid products. And in 1960-61, I uh, took the company away from nails entirely uh, because we did not really understand uh, those materials that were needed. Uh, this is a story that, uh, uh, that Anastasia doesn't know. But I had a very good friend who worked for the, uh, the pharmaceutical company called Bristol-Myers. And Bristol-Myers Squibb, interestingly enough, they owned a company called Clairol. And Clairol was a big hair company, and the Gelb family, G-E-L-B family, they were, the, they were the owners and they ran Bristol-Myers. And I had talked to my friend, who started with Bristol-Myers in 19... Actually, 61, 62, 63, and they had they were working with ortho, ortho, uh, orthopedic companies replacing hips and knees, <clears throat> and I asked them what kind of adhesives they used for bonding the hips in the body, and I found out that it was that it was a methacrylate-based material similar to the chemistry that I was interested in developing with my chemist, Harry Cumler, to make basically acrylic nails. So we then did all of the various chemical studies to determine the safety of ethyl methacrylate monomer, not methyl methacrylate monomer. So we studied the, the history, we called histological uh, value of ethyl methacrylate monomer and looked at the various polymers, and lo and behold, I found that these, these materials, these polymers and monomers, were actually used to bond hips in the body. So then I had the idea, well, geez, if they could do that, could we possibly modify the chemistry so it could be user-friendly with a nail technician? And I worked with many nail technicians developing with Mr. Kemmler and other polymer chemists to develop uh, powder liquid systems that would work well on the brush and would be kind to the fingernail. Uh, it has always been rather 
interesting or fascinating to me that there are often exposés on uh, Good Morning America and various TV shows and they, they talk about acrylics causing uh, problems and cancer and all this other kind of stuff. But in fact, we have been using that chemistry uh, uh, for many, many years to bond uh, bones in the body. So that's a story, uh, Anastasia, that I don't think you'd heard before. And it isn't actually a story, it's, it's, it's actually fact. Yeah. So what was the moment when you realized that the whole new industry appeared? Well, that's, uh, that's another story. And as you know, Anastasia, we have been, uh, we have been associated for many years. As a matter of fact, uh, our son Rick Slack, who is president of NSI, Rick Slack met you uh, before I did and uh, I've always been in the background in development. But I had a, a gal, her name was Roz Feldman, and she lived in a little town uh, uh, a few miles from where I lived, and she was using a methyl methacrylate monomer-based acrylic system. And the Federal Drug Administration uh, in the U.S., the FDA came in and shut her down and would not allow the use of MMA, methyl methacrylate monomer, in the nail business. And she knew that I was in the chemical business and she was connected with a friend of mine and she asked if I couldn't help her develop another product. I had already observed that the, the, this chemistry, the polymer monomer chemistry, if it was compounded properly and if the right ingredients were used, that it was a product that could possibly have some value in the nail business. And this would be in probably 67, 68, roughly, because I had, I had completely gotten out of the nail business, because our main business at the time was making dental materials for crowns, bridges, fillings. So I would work with Roz Feldman every Wednesday night in her little salon, and my chemist at the time, Harry Kemmler, to develop polymers and monomers that would work for the nail technician. And at that time, I found that a single polymer, just plain methyl polymer and just plain ethyl polymers did not work. So I worked with a, uh, a large specialty polymer company and we developed a copolymer <coughs> that was much more user friendly. It had the strength of methyl but had the solubility qualities of ethyl and then we worked with ethyl methacrylate monomers and we were cross-linking them and we were using them for making temporary teeth in our dental business. So it was this gal at Roz Feldman uh, that really uh, helped me develop the first products because at that time the whole nail business was underground. And then I went on once I solved her problem for her, she gave me her little black client book as a gift, and she put in a brown envelope 10 $100 bills. And she said, Fred, I want you to take this brown envelope. Don't open it now. She had me out to dinner, and she said, open this when you go home. And I went home, and there were 10 $100 bills. And if you can imagine, in 1967, that was a lot of money. And then she showed me her little black book. And a little black book contained all of her clients and how much they were paying to get her, the nail services done. And that's when I said to myself, well, this could be a very interesting business. So then, and a lot of this, a lot of people tell their stories about how things happen. Well, trust me, I'm, I'm an old man, I'm 77 years old, and a lot of it happens by luck. And it was lucky that I met Roz Feldman, just as I've been very lucky to meet uh, Anastasia and many other world-class technicians, because it is, it's the world-class technicians like Anastasia to come up with the ideas to develop new products. Uh, on, another, uh, on another end, there was a doctor, and I don't, uh, Anastasia might have to cut this out of her video, but there was a dentist, and his name was Dr. Stuart Nordstrom. 
And Dr. Nordstrom was using one of my filling materials. It was an emergency repair material. And uh, it, was a, it was a combination of composite resin and methacrylate polymers and monomers. And he thought he had invented uh, a fingernail product. And, and I said to Stuart, I said, Stuart, I think I know what you're doing here. And I would suggest that uh, if you're interested in getting involved in this business, uh, hop on a plane and come on back here and we can talk about it. So Dr. Stuart Nordstrom came back to, to Philadelphia with his wife, Mary Nordstrom, and his daughter, Jan Nordstrom, and I helped Stuart Nordstrom develop the first uh, nail product for his company, which became Creative Nail Design. And so we developed all of the Creative Nail original acrylics. We developed the original products. We did work. We did work for all the major companies because we were basically research, development, and manufacturing. So. One thing led to, to another, but going back to the beginning, it, my, if, if I have, my biggest value is that I work with the users of the product. The nail technician is the heart of what I do. Without sitting with nail technicians like Anastasia, uh, next week, uh, in two weeks, we'll have Denise uh, right here, who is an independent nail technician from London. We'll have Darlene coming in from Canada. And what they do is they, they find all of these new different products and they come back and say, well, could we modify this? Could we change that? As a matter of fact, uh, Anastasia and I have been talking about those very things here today uh, in our development and manufacturing facility. So. I, I, I'm way too long-winded, I talk too much, but that's part of the rest of the story. Are you still involved in dental business? Yes, we, we still do specialty dental materials. Interestingly enough, uh, the dental business, we still use acrylic polymers and monomer in the dental business for temporary crowns and bridges. So if you need a new crown or bridge, what they do is they make a temporary crown and bridge. Well, uh, we have a product which is called Super T. It's called Super Temp Temporary. And it is a product that can last up to a year in the mouth. And that particular product, what I did was I took composite chemistry, uh, which is BIS-GMA. It's called BIS-GMA, which is an adhesive. We added composite chemistry to acrylic chemistry, and we have a temporary material, which is one of our biggest selling products. So we still manufacture orthodontic direct bonding adhesives, acid etch materials, a few crown and bridge materials, uh, but the, the dental business is not nearly as big as the, uh, as the cosmetic business. Uh, we also have another company that's an industrial adhesives company uh, that we started many years ago. It's called Tridox Products, and we make industrial adhesives that they coat uh, aluminum uh, airplane propellers with to prevent oxidation. So we're involved in a lot of different areas. What's more important, professional products or professional education? Uh, it, that is an interesting question, Anastasia, because when Rick Slack, who's president of NSI, when we started NSI, we concentrated more on the marketing and the packaging uh, and the advertising and the, uh, the distribution end of the company. It is interesting now that uh, NSI is over, I think, I'm not sure the exact date of its founding, but I think we're a little over 30 years, it is interesting to me that the total, I would say that the 95% focus of NSI today is on education uh, because it is the education 
that allows the nail technician to learn the different techniques of using acrylics and gels and gel polishes and dip systems. And so I would say that NSI is far more uh, involved in education today than it ever has been. Uh, and we are, we are now, every, de every year we put on NSI University, which will be coming up in September. Uh, there's going to be a university, NSI University in Canada. There'll be the third one in South Africa. I understand NSI UK is going to be putting one on. Uh, Mary Luce, NSI Spain, I think has already had a university. So education to us is the key to the future of NSI. What advice would you give to beginners, those who are just getting started? Well, uh, my advice to beginners is, is to, you have to associate, in my, this is my opinion, I understand, I'm not a nail technician, so these, these opinions are merely opinions. Anastasia and Denise and Darlene and other uh, world-class educators would have a much better answer, but my answer would be getting involved with a nail technician who has experience in all areas. I think what Anastasia is doing now with her online uh, education video program is really going to be the future. That's where you're going to learn how to do nails. Uh, but after that, I think the, the most important thing is is, is, is associating with a, a salon that is willing to teach you how to do nails the right way. Uh, of course, in, in each country, in the U.S., we have schools, we have, uh, uh, we have cosmetology schools, but when it comes to nails, n nails, nails is quite different. Uh, I, I, I liken nail technology to laboratory technology. We make laboratory products, which are crayon and bridge materials. And the, the nail technician has to work with her hands. She has to know how to hold a brush. She needs to use her hands. Well, a laboratory tech has to do the same thing. When they're, they're matching colors and they're carving teeth, so you need to get associated with a successful nail technician that is, that is profitable, that's making money. You have to start out slow. And in order to move up the ladder, uh, you have to take your time and you have to be with a patient teacher. But I think, I think the future of learning to do nails is, is exactly the same as what is happening today in the education field. And there are people that are taking online courses for high school diplomas to college diplomas and, and if you have the right person uh, that is doing the online uh, on-nail application education, there's no better way to learn.